Uh, as I was surfing YouTube and watching a lot of different videos, I'm, uh, I'm a spiritual videos, I'm really astounded at how complex spirituality uh, is or how complex people make it. Um, there's all these books we're supposed to read. There's these, these, this language, um, like one consciousness. Um, uh, I can't even. I can't even think of all the. I, my mind tends to tune out all the uh, the lingo, but there's this. There's this whole rigmarole. This whole dogma of things. The, uh, just this code of doctrine of how we're supposed to behave, what we're supposed to believe, um, that the ego is the evil, cruel uh, wolf, that the mind is the enemy. And I think when we take it into extreme, yeah, the, the, there are truths to that. But there's something to be said about just keeping it simple. And... I think one of the big reasons why spirituality has become so complex is you can't really sell people books, seminars, lectures, um, if it's simple. Because they can do it without the guru, without the teacher, without all the dogma. Instead of spending, you know weeks or months studying how to meditate just sit by a river sit on a park bench take a bath listen to soothing music instead of you know going to a therapist for years on end journal write just free write S practice being in the present moment still your mind observe your mind Tune in to your, your, your inner compass. I mean, there's just simple, practical solutions that don't need to be complicated. But we love complication. We love the pursuit that oh, I'm, de I'm deficient in something. And this person seems really intelligent because they're using all this fancy, complicated lingo. And... They have the answer because they seem smarter than me. And so we're conditioned from a very young age to, to seek external validation for our self-worth. And we don't trust our own in, internal compass. And so we're constantly looking outside ourselves. And then there's people that appear and say, hey, I have the answer. Buy this book, subscribe. I mean, I was looking at Eckhart uh, Tolle's website. He now has, uh, for $15 a month, you can pay and, and watch all his videos. And I, I, Eckhart Tolle is the man. Don't get me wrong. But really, is the problem that we're lacking information? Is the problem we don't know the right teachings? Or is the problem that we never stop seeking? And we don't just trust the inner knowledge, the inner wisdom, our own intuition that's within us. That we just don't go within. And there comes a time when you just have to put down all the external stuff and, and just get back to basics. And I say, if children can do it, children have... You know, they have that, that innocence, that joy, that exuberance, that honesty. They have it. They didn't need to spend, you know, going money, going to seminar, reading all kinds of books. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there comes a point when we have to leave the crutches behind. They have it instinctively. We as adults have it instinctively, but we just buried it so deeply with all this, the conformity, all the rules from all these different spiritual teachings, religions, philosophies. I mean, there's guys who, who are, uh, who I was watching on the internet, who are talking about enlightenment and, and are quoting all kinds of teachers and books. I mean, it was just, it makes your head explode. And one of the most enlightened people I've ever met 
was a, a, a dishwasher at a restaurant I worked. This guy was just, his energy, he just exuded um, contentment, peace, joy. He, he was 50, 55 years old and was washing dishes, and I'd never seen a happier man. And he did he didn't read a million self help books. He I mean he was just he had it intuitively. It was just there. I I would just love talking to him and finding out what what his secret was, what he believed. And he just talked about how he loved his wife, he loved his family, and he you know, he was so he was from Mexico and he was so appreciative to be able to, to come here and, and earn some money uh, to support his family. I mean, he just kept it simple, back to basics. And I think that to the gr- degree we complicate our lives is the degree we continue that endless cycle of s- external seeking. And I find that the, the most c- peaceful, I, the, more, the more I simplify my life, from obligations, burdens, responsibilities, a mental clutter, um, physical possessions, even books, and, and just keep it really simple. It, my energy is not drawn out externally, and I have it harnessed and at my disposal, like a, a tap. Anytime I want fresh water, it's there. I just go within. And that's something available to all of us if it's not about adding to, if we only strip away. Just go back to naked. Just return to simplicity, return to nakedness, return to that childlike state. And that comes by just saying no, simplifying, making things easy. There was another, I was reading another article about, um, this was this was oh I think about studying like good techniques for studying, and one of the things was he talked about uh, keeping it simple and there was a a, a science writer, a, sci- a scientist who worked at one of these prestigious universities, and he published this paper, and he just made it so simple that anybody can understand it and it was like so well received it was picked up in the news media. Um, other his his colleagues he thought it you know his colleagues wouldn't be interested in it they were interested and just by just leaving out all the jargon all the complexity and again back to basics and one of our talking about back to basics one thing that I would think really help if we focus on if we're struggling spiritually it's like if we're stuck, struggling, people have bad health. What, what do they do? They go to the doctor and they want a, a medicine, a, a pill to fix themselves. Or they want the surgery, the operation. We want that quick fix. And I, I think that a lot of us look to spirituality as that life vest being flung out as, as a last resort. We're going to go to spirituality to try to fix how screwed up our lives are. And what really is the that's not the core what the core is is poor life choices and even deeper than that is a lack of self discipline and we when we create bad daily habit patterns we procrastinate we don't manage our money properly we don't eat well we don't exercise we uh, continue in toxic relationships we don't learn from the previous relationship we and just have poor lifestyle habits, a lack of self-discipline. And then we look, oh, spirituality, you know, that's going to save me. That's going to help me. And there, it can be, I think it's something that can coincide with something that's even more important, is a strong foundation of self-discipline. Of realizing that you reap what you sow. And a lot of the mess that we've created in our lives is based on our previous poor choices and lack of self-discipline. It takes practice, but there's nothing more rewarding of just clearing all the clutter out of your life, keeping it really simple, watching what goes in through the senses, through the mouth, and then making a daily practice of uh, self-discipline. All right, thanks for listening, commenting, subscribing. And uh, talk to you later.